The purpose of this video is twofold. One is to go over another Gaussian elimination example, and the other is to show you that you can be pragmatic when it comes to Gaussian elimination, meaning that you don't always have to start at the top left and move down and to the right. You can start wherever you want and do whatever you want as long as you don't undo what you achieved in the previous step. Consider this system, for example. Because we'll be solving this system by hand, we do want to work with unit pivots. But even then, there are about four different ways in which you could approach Gaussian elimination in this case. For example, you could divide the first row by 3. As you can see, every number in the first row is divisible by 3. And that would give you a unit in the familiar place, top left. Alternatively, you could be attracted to this one right here. And you can swap rows 1 and 3 if you do insist on starting at the top left. As a third alternative, you could leave this one right where it is, at the bottom left, and then start working your way from the bottom left and then go wherever you want. But there is another alternative, the one that I'll pursue, because it's the most unorthodox approach to Gaussian elimination. I will use this one as my first pivot. It is as far away from the top left as you can imagine. And as you will see, Gaussian elimination will work just as well and will produce the correct answer just as doing it in the standard way would. So let's go ahead and do that. I will first uh, make a copy, but then I will start erasing and I will work right in this place right here. So now I'm starting at the bottom right. So this is my pivot. So the step begins simply by copying the third row down. Okay, now we're ready to start Gauss elimination. We will first use this pivot right here to eliminate this two. And that is accomplished by subtracting two of the third row from the second. So yes, we're doing it in a slightly unfamiliar way, but we're being pragmatic. So here's what we would get. Subtracting two of the third row from the second, we have one, zero, five, six, zero, six. Okay? And because we have zero right here, the first step of Gauss elimination is complete. And what I need to do right now is simply copy the first row down here. Okay, this is my pivot. I will now use this six as my next pivot, although I could just as easily use this one. Although I could not use this one right here because there's already a pivot in the last row and you cannot have two pivots in the same row. This would be undoing what we accomplished in the previous step. Here's why. If you use this as your pivot, yes, you could eliminate this one by subtracting row three from row two, but then you would introduce a negative one right here, where we worked so hard to achieve this zero. So no, we cannot use this our pivot. We could use this one as our pivot, but I will actually use this six to continue with our unorthodox order of doing things, because this six is perfect for eliminating this six. And that is accomplished by subtracting row two from row one. And now I will use my eraser to accomplish the goal. So we're subtracting row two from row one. Okay, where does our next pivot come from? Well, we have a one here, so might as well use that as our pivot. And our unorthodox Gaussian elimination is complete. What we will embark on now is Jordan back substitution, but of course everything is upside down and reversed. Nevertheless, let me use this one, my final pivot, to eliminate this five, and then later to eliminate this three. So what we're going to do now is subtract five of row one from row two. We're subtracting five of row one from row two. And the rest is unchanged. And finally, I will subtract, I will eliminate this three by subtracting three of row one from row three. Three of row one from row three. And Gaussian elimination is complete. 
Yes, we could take it one step further by scaling this 6 down to a 1, but I think in this case is unnecessary because the solution is quite evident from the form in which we have the system now. Except now, instead of using the first three columns, as it usually happens, or at least the first three pivot columns, well, we'll actually will use our three pivot columns, but now they appear all the way to the right of the matrix, on the matrix's right, on the right of the matrix. So here we go. In order to decompose the right-hand side, in terms of these columns, we need to take one of column four and one of column five. So our particular solution is zero, 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 one, one. Now for the null space. The first element of the null space will come from this non-pivot column, three pivot columns, two non-pivot columns, so two-dimensional null space. And here's the proportions in which we need to take the pivot columns in order to represent this column. We need to take two of this column, minus nine-sixth, minus nine-sixth, in other words, minus three halves of this column, and of course, negative five of this column. That will produce exactly one of the first column, so we need to subtract it to get the zero column. And now, in order to have integers in this column, I will multiply each one of these numbers by two, in fact, negative two, so we have as few negative numbers as possible. So here's what we'll get. Two, negative zero, negative four, 3 and 10. Okay? And for the final element in the null space, we'll use, excuse me, this non-pivot column, which of course takes exactly 2 of the fifth column to replicate. So I will have to take negative 1 of this column and 2 of this column. So 0, negative 1, 0, 0, 2. 0, negative 1, 0, 0, 2. And there you go. We have obtained the complete general solution to this system, even though we pursued Gaussian elimination in a somewhat unorthodox way. But it was completely pragmatic, and that's the message of this video.